you can reclaim the power over it because it's not just about beliefs and thoughts anymore. If you've ever met someone who's genuinely thriving, someone who is radiant, magnetic, and wildly alive, and wondered, what's their secret? Well, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the Be Marvelous Podcast. Welcome to the Be Marvelous podcast. I'm your host, Marta Kagan. I'm so happy you joined me today. And I'm here each week on a mission to help women build unfuck with the bull self confidence, to break out of old patterns, and to feel sexy as fuck, no matter what age. And to do that, we're going to get out of our heads and into our bodies, right? That is the whole point of the show. Today, I'm joined by a special guest who's going to talk to me about how we're helping women get out of their heads and into their bodies, and specifically how we're helping facilitate their ability to be the most orgasmically abundant version of themselves. In other words, to be well-fucked and (laughs) well-paid. So please join me in welcoming back to the show, Barbara Katznelson, aka The Awareness Muse. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Marta. So happy to be here and doing this with you. Oh, I'm so happy that you're my co-conspirator, collaborator, co-facilitator, like co-pilot in all of this because you get it. <laughs> you felt it. You're so articulate about it. You've built your whole business around this topic and it just feels so timely. I want you to introduce yourself to listeners who haven't heard you on prior episodes, but I want to jump to the conversation we had the other day when I got back from Iceland, which really sparked this episode. So Please introduce yourself for a moment. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Barbara Katz Nelson, aka The Awareness Muse, aka Spiritual Pleasure Pop Star, Sex Doula, Sex and Love Coach. And I help women manifest epic love and financial abundance in their life through feminine embodiment. Yes. Fuck yes. And so this program that we have aptly titled The well Fucked and Well-Paid Woman, this controversial quote-unquote title, is what kind of sparked this conversation, this episode, and is also the title of this episode because it just feels like that is, those words are exactly the opposite of what the whole system, the whole patriarchal culture that we live in does not want us to experience. We will do anything to keep you from being well fucked and well paid. We won't use those words. We'll couch it in morality. We'll couch it in all these other reasons why it's for the best. We won't say that outright, but that's really what it comes down to. And so I think it's really important for us to use those words, to talk about why, to talk about what it means to be well fucked and well paid. Why are we creating this program? What's the whole impetus? And when I got back the other day from Iceland and we got on a call to touch base about what I missed for a week. You shared with me some news and data points and you were pissed. You were like, I can't believe this is happening. So let's start there because that sort of sets the stage for all this. I just want to like, even before we even get into the stats on the surface, the well-fucked, well-paid women, when I think about it from the perspective of other people seeing that, It might really trigger some people. It might cause you to blush. It might cause you to feel really uncomfortable. It might cause you to feel judgy. And yet at the same time, there might be a part of you that's also like, wait, I want to get well fucked about me. Yeah. (laughs) I want that even though that feels wrong. And it like that title might sound like edgy or frivolous, or there might be a part of you that's like, you can't spend money on learning about that kind of thing. But it really encompasses the whole program. And again, it might seem frivolous, it might seem like edgy, but there's so much more to that title that meets the eye. And that's where it's going to bring us into the stats. And one of the reasons we created this program now at this point in time is because of what is happening in our country when it comes to sex, 
women's what's rights in general, I would say. Yeah, women's rights. And there's just basically like all of this backlash and attack on women's rights in general. And it immediately starts to go towards what our sexuality and our yeah. bodies. They want to start controlling us. And we continue to stay in this place of we are the object. They are the subject. We are the object. So our sexuality has to do for them or for us to repopulate in. And we don't have a say. And when we're disconnected from that, we don't have power. So we have less power. We make less money. We make less money. We're more depressed. We're, pleasure is not even a thing. And we don't even know what our bodies can do. And the thing is, I am under the impression that if you're born with a clitoris and it's got 10,000 10, nerve endings for the sole purpose of you to feel pleasure. I don't care what religion you subscribe to. I truly believe that was put into your body by source, by God, goddess, whoever you subscribe to for you to experience it. Yeah. I mean, people hear me say that they're like, I felt that. And I'm like, because it's true. That's why you felt it. Yeah. But yeah. our culture taught us to really like deny that. And then they pile on with bullshit like these stats. I was going to add to what you're saying by pointing out how much shame is really like normalized. It is normal to be ashamed of your clitoris. Like even that word is like <gasps> to be ashamed of your body, to be ashamed of like its size, shape, how much is covered, how much is uncovered. That's part of the whole thing. And I think when we don't realize how much a role shame is playing in the narrative, right? The fact that so many girls grow up not even having a word for their female genital parts, right? For the part of them that is actually the most female, right? It is the defining feature quality of femininity. We don't even have a word for it. Why? Shame. Why do we cover things up? Why are there like rows and rows of aisles in every pharmacy and like Target across the US that are all products designed to change how it smells, how it looks, cover it up, and they're hidden in the back corner. And same thing with makeup, which is luckily up front, <laughs> but it's again, thousands of rows of stuff to make us feel differently about ourselves, right? To cover up whatever is wrong. And that is so normal that you don't even recognize that it's a thing. It's just, it's just how it is. And this is the stuff that like, that's like the underneath that got me angry. But I guess what started, what got me angry was like, we had this debate the other day. Presidential debate. Yeah. Presidential debate. And I was like, two minutes in, I was like, I can't watch this. I don't know. Somehow I like feel like I connected to Hillary. And I was like, if I was her, I'd probably, I'd be like throwing shit at my TV and yeah. I'd be like freaking out because we are here because ultimately a woman ran for president. That's how we got to here. Because if you watch debates previously, they're completely different. Candidates are kind to each other. They're talking about issues that are really important. Apparently the debate ended with them talking about golf. Golf, what? We have as of, I'm going to, so then that prompted me to go look at some stats having to do with women, because instead of talking about women's rights, we're talking about golf. So what's <laughs> happening in women's rights? Let's go. As of July 1st, 2024, there are 21 states in America who have banned abortion. I'm talking about the kind of abortion that could save a woman's life. Imagine you are a mom and you have a little kid and now you have a fetus inside of you that's actually causing you so much pain and distress to your body that it could kill you. And the doctors are like, we have to kill the fetus because you're not going to make it. You don't get to make that decision anymore. Yep. Yeah. 21 fucking states. A judge gets to do that. So what happens to your kid that's already living? People think abortion is just about, oh, let me go run rampant and be this slut who continues to get pregnant and have abortion. It's so asinine. This is just my opinion, but, <laughs> but I don't think abortion has ever actually been about life. It's always been about control, as are all of the things we're going to talk about here, as all the stats you're going to share, this whole, this whole thing. And the reason why we created a program that 
gives us power back, why we're hell bent on empowering women to find that within themselves as opposed to wrestling it out of the hands of the patriarchy, which is not going to give it up. We, no one's going to give it to us. No one's going to be like, okay. Never. Never. Um, never. But it's all about control. It's purely about control. So let's just call it what it is and not pretend but, it's like something yeah, about control. our health. Controlling our bodies and our minds and everything about us. And so because this has happened, they're now proposing all of these new laws. Like Clarence Thomas was like, now we're going to go after birth control, get ready. And they're feeling really emboldened in these states. And then they're also pushing for no fault divorce, which means today in all of the states, you can get a divorce and you don't have to prove that your partner did something wrong. You can just be like, I'm out. But what no fault divorce, you got to prove that he's raping you and beating the shit out of you. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. And also bans on sexual education, mind you. Not only is the sexual education that we have in this country so dysfunctional and elementary and does not support us at all, now they want to ban it completely. And they want to ban people having sex if it's not like before the wedding night. What does that do to even LGBTQ, right? Like the, the community, not just like hetero people. Basically, they're saying, and what it is, we're controlling sex and we're putting a ban on sex, making it just for fun. We're like, we're born again, if this goes back to the clitoris. Uh, and it's so interesting because it's happening at this time because there's more and more women like you, like me, who are like out there spreading this word. I don't think it's an accident that they're coming hard. It's almost like they yeah. can feel us. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Educating women and being like, hey, you have so much power and creativity in your body and your womb is not just for making babies it's actually for so much more you can birth a lot of things in your life literally and figuratively and they don't want us to know that and they don't want us to use it for fun because then we're like wild and they can't control us and it's once we get connected and if we are collectively connected to the power that's in our pussy we are collectively connected to the power the clitoris has there's no fucking way we are going to let them run the show yeah yeah that's the thing and that's what's so i think infuriating to them and so terrifying and why the pushback is so strong and urgent and really cracking down because an empowered woman is extremely inconvenient to the system we live in She's not only inconvenient, she's, frankly, she's dangerous, right? She's not going to be constantly insecure in a cycle of what product do I need to buy next to look younger, to be thinner, to please or attract this person, right? She's not going to need all the stuff, the billions and billions of dollars of stuff that's been created to feed that cycle. She's not going to settle for crumbs. She's not going to be okay with this. As long as we can keep women scared and feeling inferior and comparing themselves to one another and not trusting one another and not knowing their bodies and not knowing their power and not feeling pleasure, like then we maintain control. That's basically it. And I'm not saying, by the way, if you're a man listening to this, I'm not saying that everyone is intentionally like on this campaign. I'm not saying that there are not conscious men who think this is also outrageous and want to change it. I'm saying that there is a system that has momentum <laughs> that's been well fed and bred for eons. It's really bucking against the noise that women like Barbara and I are making about, hey, you have a pussy and that is a beautiful thing and you do not need to be ashamed of it or hide it or change or call it your front butt or whatever. It's here for a reason. It is your source of power. And also shifting the paradigm from us being these sexual creatures for ourselves and having our own sex and having ownership over our own body, being like, if I need to get an abortion, I'm going to get an abortion. But if I want to have sex for fun, I'm going to have sex for fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the reason why this program, Well Fucked and Well Paid, under the surface, below the surface, if we dig deeper, is so important is because generationally, for so long, We've been taught not to have sex for fun. We didn't even know what it was. Our mothers didn't, like, it's just not, it's not available for us. And because it's not available for us, we can't show our lovers and we're at a loss. 
right? Because we don't know what we're doing. They don't know what we're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. And then we think we have libido issues. And it's like, you have a libido issue because you've never been taught how to really enjoy and worship the mechanics that you came with. And so as we start educating women about, and then they get more educated, which means they feel more confident because parts of them that have been numbed out and disconnected now come online, they become more in their power. They become more confident. They're asking for more stuff. That means the standard quality of the way you're being treated in and out of the workplace, in and out of the bedroom is raised. And all of a sudden now we have things like this, the stuff that I just mentioned, we have to fucking deal. This is real. And if it's happening in the red states, it's gonna like spill over to the blue states because 10 years ago, I could not fathom the idea of 21 states in America, like banning a boy. Couldn't, wouldn't, it wouldn't even yeah. be a thing. Like it would, that's absurd. And now this is where we are. And the reason why, you know, one of the reasons why this is actually even happening is because when you don't know what type of pleasure is available to you, you're not going to take a stand. Yeah. When you don't know what your body is capable of, when you don't know, when that education has been um, taken away from you, you're not going to take a stand. You're going to shy away and the shame is going to keep you paralyzed. Yeah. And shame is, again, to bring shame up again, this is why we did our shameless workshop recently. Like the desire to be a good girl is so ingrained in us so early and so often. And so even saying the name of the program, right? Like I want to enroll in the well-fucked and well-paid woman. Like the good girl in you is going to have a problem with that. She's going to be like, whoa, that's not even language I feel comfortable using perhaps, right? <laughs> even if even though there's definitely parts of you that are like, that's exactly what I want. Of course, that's what I want. <laughs> but that good girl shame is it's a real thing that we don't often look at and don't understand where it came from. It's not yours. You are not born with shame. You are not born with, I need to be the good girl. You learn that because you learn that you want your caregivers and then later your friends and peers to like you, to invite you, right? To validate you. And so if you do something that doesn't get that, you're like, okay, now put that in the column of things that will get me rejected. So certainly if you grow up in a red state, you grow up in a community, a family where sexuality is totally kept secret, where there is no information, where abortion is murder and we don't talk about our parts below and we don't look at them and everything is shrouded in shame, of course you're going to have an issue with this. But even for women who don't have all of that pressure, who just grow up, quote unquote, normal, healthy Americans, <laughs> even for us, the messaging is everywhere. The word pussy is used as an insult liberally, as opposed to this word of power and pleasure and beauty and like magic which is what it actually is. Exactly. So even just like going back to the good girl shame, right? So like when you think about good girl shame, like even thinking about, I feel like a common one is even like signing up for something like well fucked, well paid, maybe like the fear of being like called slutty comes out, right? Yeah. And so immediately when it's a fear, it's like a thought. There's like a voice, it has a sound. Okay, you can't do that. This is, I'm gonna do that. How are you going to tell your husband or maybe your partner or whoever or, or your friends? You can't like, oh, no, you can't do that. Um, even though part of you really wants to do that. So an internal dialogue maybe starts to happen. And ultimately, that thought, that belief, whatever that slut shaming is, first of all, that's a trauma, like number one, and I am trauma informed. So that is a trauma and for some women it could be a big t trauma for some women it could be a little t trauma depending on how, what you dealt with when you were a kid and then that's a way to control us that's like how all it used to come externally the control and now it's become part of us in the thoughts and in the beliefs the, the thoughts the beliefs but then what people don't realize and what we will be covering in our program what makes well fox well pay different than maybe other programs like this is that there is a place in your body, like from the neck down, where that part of you that is deeply afraid of the slut's shaming lives. She's there, she's alive, it 
and there are sensations that go along with it. And one of the things that we will do in the program is actually show you how to move through it so it doesn't control you and have power over you anymore. You can reclaim the power over it because it's not just about beliefs and thoughts anymore. What happens when you want to do something that might be sexy or something like against the grain, but feels good to you, but you're like, oh no, I can't do that because I'm afraid of whatever, your body gets locked up. And there's a part of your body that's not letting you make this decision from your awareness, from your soul, right? It's a decision that all of a sudden the ego takes over and it starts to, because it's so deeply ingrained in the body. I'm trained in the body work and the feminine embodying work. It's like, let's address that yeah. because that's what's really blocking us as a collective is like, where is it in our bodies? Where is it happening in our bodies? Where is this thing stopping me from doing what I really want? Is it really the beliefs and thoughts or is it deeper? Yeah. Am I really not having the sex that I want as an adult, as a consenting adult, because there's something wrong with me? Or is yeah. just my body so used to me feeling like I'm, there's something wrong with me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's so much survival mode. There's so much like survival. unconscious yeah. trauma that your your body is responding to and monitoring, like vigilantly looking for cues to tell you whether you're safe or not, that you don't even realize that we'll get excavated and healed and integrated in a different way through a program like Well Fucked and Well Paid and through a lot of the embodiment work that you do with your clients also. Um, I want to talk specifically about if someone's listening to this, who is this program really for? Because we've talked about why the patriarchy does not want this program to be why the algorithm does not want you to know about this program. And actually, I want to double click on that for a second, because as part of this pushback that Barbara and I are talking about, we cannot talk about this program on Instagram or some of the social media platforms without it being, yeah, without being dinged for it. Let's, let's just say, to put it mildly, right? They don't want you to know about this. They don't want you to talk about pleasure. They don't want us to use the word sexuality. They don't want us to say pussy or clitoris. Like, there's a whole list of those. And, and I want to call that out. That is happening. We are being censored for talking about things that are empowering women. Why? Because empowered women are inconvenient and groups of empowered women are frankly fucking dangerous. I mean, we used to, before the patriarchy, like planted its deep roots, we used to gather together. Women would gather together. Women were powerful. Women like ran the community, ran the village, made the decisions, right? And then when they started to tear that apart, burn us at the stake and make us feel like we were threats to each other for the male attention. And that the male attention was really the whole point, right? You need a husband, you need a provider. That's how the system started to shift. And now we've been in the legacy of that for centuries. Um, I digress. <laughs> Bringing it back, I want to talk about who is this for? Like, how do you know if you are right for this program, if you um, are the kind of person that can put aside some of the good girl stuff, can dive into being well fucked and well paid. Like, let's talk about that for a minute. So the woman who this would be amazing for is if really, if you are like first and foremost, someone who like saw the title and was like shocked by it, or it made you blush, or it made you uncomfortable, but then there's another part of you like, wait, when I actually think about it, I do want to be well fucked and well paid. Like, <laughs> There's so that's definitely someone there. That's definitely the your that's definitely perfect candidate for this. Another, if you are always putting everyone else's needs before your own, like your kids, your partner, work, everything's always coming before you. Yep. And you even might even see it, but you can't get out of the habit. And yep. you understand what that's doing to your, the impact it has on your life. You're tired of feeling insecure about your body. Like you're tired of being like, when I lose weight, I'll wear that. When I lose weight, I'm going to put the lights on for sex. When I lose right. weight, I'll be in the mood to have sex. You're just 
fucking sick and tired of trying to measure up to some 16 year old advertisement of lingerie that's airbrush. You're tired. And you're like, this isn't realistic. And it doesn't even make sense. But I'm like living my life this way. You feel like epically great sex is not even a possibility anymore because you're like older or you, that window is closed. Yeah. You feel like wanting better sex or more money is like too much. Yeah. There's it, the good girl, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I have so much already. And there's that guilt that comes up. Like I'm going to want more money or I'm going to want a be and better sex. That's crazy town. It sounds good. But who am I? Like I'm not worthy of that. And some of this stuff is sneaky and insidious, I will say, because I don't know if this is true for your clients also, Barbara, but like most of my clients, if you met them, you would think this is a confident woman who is secure in herself and has her shit together. Like you wouldn't, you would not look at her and go, oh, I see she's working on herself because on paper to the outside world, she has accomplished a lot and she's doing well. And she has the, the markings of someone who has her shit together and doesn't need this. But it turns out <laughs> that we as women do a very good job of putting ourselves together for the outside world and seeming like everything's okay. Well, in the, on the inside, we are terrified actually of being fully seen as who we actually are. So there's a part of her that's just not allowed to see the light of day. There's a part of her that wants things that she feels guilty for wanting. There's a part of her that feels shame for some of her desires. And, and that's not something that you're going to necessarily recognize. So if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, but on the surface, I already have these things. I want you to just dig a little deeper and ask yourself, do you feel like you are really able to be the youest version of you? Do you feel like you really know your body well and you love and accept it no matter what the, the scale says right now or the dress size is, right? Can you find pleasure in your own flesh? <laughs> Do you know how to? Do you feel like you can't wait until the next time that you can touch yourself or someone is going to touch you or both? Those are the kinds of nuances that maybe don't occur to us because we live in this culture that's so far from normalizing sexual sovereignty for women. It can be a little subtle, it can be a little insidious and sneaky and like you think you're okay and actually there's still so much room for growth. Yeah, because it's also layered and I think that to your point, it's like that I think a really great barometer is let's close your eyes and really go inside right now and just ask yourself, am I fulfilled by the amount of money I'm making? Mm -hmm. Is that feeling really good to me right now? Am I fulfilled by my sex life? Do I feel radiant in spite of all of the things that I have and all of the beauty products, all of like, do I feel like that beauty? Am I available to receive more abundance? Does that make me feel uncomfortable or does that make me feel like, yes, bring it on? You're just really going inside and starting. That's when the program starts. When you're even considering, it's like, it's starting then. If you're really taking on these questions and you're sitting in yourself, because the answers come from inside of you. They don't come from me. They don't come from Marta. They come from inside of you. And your body is so wise. Like there are so many answers for you and your body. There's so much wisdom there. And it's really readily available. And it took me years. To understand that I was always constantly looking for answers outside of myself. If I wanted to do a program like this years ago, I would be like, I don't know, should I do it? Should I not do it? It's like in this confusion, it would drive me crazy. And yeah. it felt awful when I said no. And then I'd see somebody else who did it and I'd be like, oh my God, this sucks. Like I didn't do it. And now I'm like, nothing's changed. Nothing's yeah. changed. But then I, I started to be like, fuck it. Like I let the rebellious part of me win. As we've said it before, it's like, when you die, no one's going to be like, oh my God, Barbara, she's such a good girl. Like she never <laughs> paid program. She stayed away from that shit. No one's going to give a fuck. So like at the end of the day, you're not doing it for anyone else. You're doing it for you. But when you take on that, you really step into that of like, I'm finally doing this shit for me. I'm not doing it for yeah. them. That is when you are doing it for them because all of a sudden you're becoming this leader in your life of like, I'm living my life for me. Yeah. I'm living my life yeah. for me. I'm yeah. living my life for 
me. I'm living my life for me, for what I really want. I'm claiming it. It's like a way to energetically claim that. And then you're like starting to see more things coming into your life that are more for you versus you should do this. Yeah. And to be clear, because this is a place where I used to get tripped up and I know a lot of women get tripped up when they hear us talking about doing this for you and claiming your desires and pursuing your dreams. We've been so conditioned to take care of others as females that can feel really uncomfortable. The, just the language we're using right now can be triggering and it's, I'm not selfish like that. That's not me. Or even if you make the comparison of men have no problem doing this, this is how they function. And then again, the conditioning will bitch slap us and go, exactly. You don't want to be like that, do you? That's not who women are. So we get our heads spun around and we're right back to like, I can't sign up for this. I can't invest in myself. I don't deserve it. It's not the right time. I'll do it one day when the kids are grown, when this blah, 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 blah. To be clear, <laughs> claiming your desires, claiming your like your happiness, doing things for you is not a selfless act. It is a focused act. It is a deliberate act, but it actually is like the fuel that allows everything else to happen because you can be taking care of everybody else. You can be the best mom, wife, sister, girlfriend, whatever. But if you're depleted, if your ability to access pleasure, to deal with the ruptures in life, to navigate the shit storm of what's happening in the patriarchy or right outside your door or in your own house, like you can't do that forever. That's why we're in survival mode. That's why we're overeating or drinking or taking sleeping pills or over shopping or like doing all these things, spending way too much doom scrolling, like these are all ways for us to try and cope. And yet none of them are actually fueling us. But we're talking about when we say invest in yourself and do this for yourself, like it becomes the fuel that actually supports not just you, but the people that matter most to you, the people in your family, in your community, in your company, like whatever spheres you run in. It is fuel for all of that. So it is so much less of a selfish act than it sounds when you just say, do it for you. I'm just going to call something out though, because this concept of selfishness being bad is also part of the control. Yes. Like, amen. <laughs> I have this thing about what the fuck is wrong with being selfish. If when I'm selfish, I get what I want. I am happier. I am better to my friends and family. I have more to give. Right. Yeah. And when they're selfish with their lives and they do what they want, they're happier. Mm -hmm. When I'm living my life being unselfish, that's when I am feeling awful, feeling unfulfilled, feeling unhappy, feeling like, oh, I can't wait for the day to end. I feel depressed. I'm in disapproval of myself. I'm in my head. I'm doubting myself. And there's no prize for the selflessness. People just take more advantage of me. When I'm oh, selfish, no. People are like, what are you doing? I want to do what you're doing. Show me what to do. How did you do that? Yeah. And I'm like, I did me. I did me. <laughs> and this selflessness thing has been put on women for this is part of the generational. This is we had to do it because we were being burned at the stake. We were fucking witches. Like when the witches were yeah. the ones that were selfish, crazy, whatever, demonic. And the good girls were selfless and they gave their lives to the family. They gave their bodies to their men, their lives to the family, and then they died. Who the fuck wants to live? Like, really think about it. Think about your mothers and what their attitude was like at home when they were super selfless. Yeah. And what did that teach you? That's what happens. Because where do we learn selflessness from? We learn it from our moms, right? So yeah. it's, we see mommy being miserable and selfless. And then we pick it up and we're like, I guess I have to do it because mom did it, right? And it's, what's interesting is when I watch moms do it that way, they think because they're being selfless, it's going to inspire their kid to be more selfish. Like the kid's going to, because now the focus is on them, but it's like, it always turns to backfire. Yeah. What happens is the kid does what you do, not what you hope for them or what you like want, you're like, I'm going to be selfless for my kid so that they can have it all. But then the kid learns mom was selfless. So I got to be selfless and it's backwards. And that's why, but it's like this idea of being selfless and like selfless is good. Selfish is wrong. Yeah. 
also lives in the body and keeps you locked in and keeps you, you stuck making decisions that are selfless that really result in incredible disappointment and depression yeah. in many women collectively. Yeah. I was one. Of them. I know that. I know that really well. Yeah. Yeah. And then to add on to that, when we express emotion about this, when we feel appropriately upset about this whole circumstance, right? That we have to be selfless, that we make 80 cents to the dollar, that we can't control our own. We don't have choices over our own bodies. We are the primary caregivers in 99% of circumstances. Like no wonder we're tired. <laughs> no wonder we feel like we can't live up to a standard. No wonder we get depressed. No wonder we get emotional. But the message is that that's wrong. When what's wrong is not our reaction to a crazy set of circumstances. What's wrong are the crazy circumstances, but they're so normal. What is normalized is that these are the circumstances and you, woman, are wrong for getting upset about them. So get your shit together. Go cry in the corner, not in the boardroom. That doesn't belong here. Right? There's so much momentum around keeping us disempowered and stuck in this place where we feel like we need to play small, we need to settle for crumbs, and it's fine. We don't need to come first or come at all. Like this is the message. And if you have a daughter, I have boys, so I, 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 I don't know how I would be dealing with this right now if I had daughters. If you have a daughter, what are you going to teach her? What are you going to model for her? It doesn't matter what you say. If she does not see you investing in yourself, if she does not see you using the word pussy, if she does not see you saying, I, I want to be a well-fucked and well-paid woman, like she's not going to either. Th these are the simple, like simple truths that we all as women have to face. And that's why I think this program is like so important. And I love how controversial the title feels because we need to fucking be controversial to change some shit. It can't happen without it. And that's like, well, fucked and well paid is a rebellion. And the rebellion has to happen on an individual level. Because I believe when there's enough individuals that have it spilled over, then it becomes yeah. collective, right? It like starts to spread like wild fire. And I think we're getting close to a tipping point in terms of how many women I know have done this work, how many women yeah. continue to do this work, how many women are getting trained to be certified in this type of work. It's definitely gotten legs under, like the movement's definitely gotten legs under it. And with good reason, because after the truth is we could talk about this till we're blue in the face. You're yeah, never going to <laughs> Yeah, but you're never going to know until you experience what we're talking about. And once you experience what we're talking about, it's like, you can't even go, there's just no way. There's no back. Yeah. There you there's can no go back. back. Oh shit. This is so good. Like you understand on a visceral level why they didn't want you to have it, why they didn't want you to know it. When I'm in a room full of women who come in and are like in their shit, hating on their body, feeling guilty that they took off this Saturday to do an embodiment practice or some shit and like thinking about all the things we need to do and depressed or whatever. And then we do a process or we do something. And then it's an hour and a half later, everyone's glowing and radiant. It's like anti-aging. And they're like, what? oh my God. And again, it's an experiential thing. Their words will never describe yeah. the experience that you will feel in your body that you may have not felt that maybe You've gotten like glimpses here and there. Yeah. Now I'm ready for the full enchilada. Like maybe you had a moose bouche here and there, but now you're like, bring it. Cause I'm like, I'm tired. I want more. I'm ready to have more. I want more. I need more. Like this is, and I want my kid to have more. And to your point that you were like, I have boys. I think it's fucking awesome that your boys get to see you like that because that's how they're going to hold women. Yeah. That's part of the problem is that the boys that many women have raised are used to seeing these selfless women who do everything for them, who would be like, no, don't go down on me, but I'll give you like the blowjob, right? Don't give me the pleasure. I'm going to give you the, I'm like, that's what the boys, and it's not like the parents are actually talking about this in front of their kids, yeah. right? But 
energy is alive in the household and then it transpires into adulthood. That's how it gets passed on. You don't have to. Words are just confirmation. The yeah, energy totally. and the actions are just like, that's the teaching, right? Yeah. So there are men in this world who will treat a woman like a queen partially because their mother was a queen. Yeah. And they're treated like a queen and was demanded. She was like, nah, this is going to be like, uh, and that's like, oh shit. Like my partner, like he's taught me stuff about feminism. And I like where he learned that from his mom. And there's a different quality to men who have female leaders like this in their lives. Yeah. And it makes it easier then for everyone else because it's like, less work for the next generation, right? You're Amen. giving your sons a gift. Whether they're hetero or not, doesn't really matter. They know how to hold a woman. They know how to see her. Kurt has, he, he runs a legal office. Almost everybody that works for him is a woman and he'll be like, she's so smart. He's one of the only few men in my life that actually sees the brilliance of a woman and depends on it. He gives her the recognition and I'm yeah. like, wow, oh my God, from a, I come from a very misogynistic background. I kind of, same, we have a very yeah. same, similar background of the Russian, my parents are refugees, very much like the woman will let her into the room, but she's not where like Kurtz, I don't even know what I would do without them. I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. They're so smart. They yeah. really have it. They're my, I can't believe it. And constantly like upwriting them. And I'm like, oh my God. And I know that it all came from his mother. I yeah. know it. And that's so like, whether you have boys or girls or they or whoever in your household, all you're doing is supporting them in raising a standard in how to yeah. treat when no and they're watching, they're, they're watching, they're always watching, whether it seems like it or not. That's so true. Yeah. They're always watching. So true. Let's spend a couple minutes just talking about what actually is well fucked and well paid. Like what happens in the program? Because if you're still listening, <laughs> you clearly need to be in this program. But let us explain to you just a little bit of what actually happens in it. And then we'll try and land this plane. So 12 weeks, we kick off July 17th. The core of this program is really this ability to get out of your head and into your body. And we're going to help show you how to do that and give you tools to make that possible because whether you realize it or not, so much of our existence is happening here, like a NECA. We spend all our time in our head. We get stuck in our thoughts. We go through thought loops. We're not present. And as part of that, we disconnect from the body. And again, this is especially true for women because of how much shame and discomfort and body dysmorphia and all these things that happen to us the first 40 minutes of this podcast episode, <laughs> that gets into your body and that then becomes this like soundtrack that plays over and over and you essentially stop listening to what's happening down here. So I would say the backbone of the program and the reason why we call it a group embodiment program as opposed to a coaching program or something like that is because we're really focused on getting you out of your head and into your body in the most beautiful way possible. Yeah, because one of the things with the overthinking is actually a symptom of toxic masculinity. So we all have, just to say, everyone has masculinity, everyone has femininity. It's not a gender thing. It's an energy. And because we live in a patriarchy, a lot of women, especially the ones who are super successful, type A, who have everything looks like on paper, really suffer from overthinking. And that has to do with this like overly masculine built up and like the feminine not given as much attention, not given as much nourishment. And the feminine really is in the body. Like the masculine is from the neck up. So you get a healthy masculine, everybody needs it. And it's like the thoughts, the being discerning and all of the things. And then the feminine, it really comes alive in the body. Just to really go over really quick, what are some of the things that we're doing in Well Fucked and Well Paid to support your whole full body experience is number one, like the first week, we're going to start with kicking off with desires, like 
we really want to fan the flames of your desires. We're going to give time and space because how often do you really do that? How often yeah. do you get together with friends or on your own and really allow yourself to make time to really say, okay, this is what I truly desire when it comes to being well and well paid. What, are, what do you desire on that? And we're going to go through what that looks like and how to put it into action using the body and your mind, using both masculine and feminine in a balanced way, in a healthy way, in a way that's actually going to support you and you feel really good about as you move through the program. And then the second week we're going to do, this is a big one. This is one of my favorite things is body love. Teaching and showing you how to truly worship your body exactly as she is right now. Like really having the experience of knowing what your body, like everybody is beautiful and having this experience of feeling into the magnificence of your body and how amazing yeah. she is, how far she got you and how beautiful she is. And it's really like a healing. This particular part of the program is like worth the price of the whole thing alone because yeah. it's, it's such a bottomless pit of despair for so many of us and it affects everything and it affects our ability to be well fucked and it affects our ability to be well paid. It affects our self-worth and our self-perception and our self-judgment and all these things. So like that alone is monumentally huge and it would be enough if that's all we offered. But there's more to this because we really want you to walk away feeling empowered and feeling like you own your body, you own your life, you own your shit, you can speak for your desires, you can ask for what you need, and you can get what you want simply because you are, not because you have to hustle and do stuff, but because you are worthy at baseline and you know how to access the part of you that is intuitive and confident. And that becomes the part of you that's that shows up in the world, not the part of you that's like cowering in the corner. That's beautiful. Then we're going to, week three is going to be about shamelessness like we're really going to go much deeper if you came to the workshop that was just a taste we're going to go way much deeper into how to drop the shame yeah shame. especially like, around around being well fucked and well paid because it's not an accident that we pick those two yes we pick them because they're important and because they're controversial and they're important and controversial for the for a reason. The reasons being that your sexual energy is your life force energy. So being well fucked is another way of saying accessing and tapping into and harnessing and unleashing that energy, which is what creates all things, including life, including a new business, including poetry and music and art and all the things, right? So that, and then the well-paid part is the compensation, the value, the appreciation that is given for the gifts that you bring to the world, which we all deserve to be rewarded for the gifts that we bring to the world without guilt, without shame. Those two things are often the most delicate topics for people, right? The ones where the most squirrely around and have the most shame around is like sex and money. Yes, we are intentionally tying those two together because they are tied together. And because this is where we really feel the opportunity to reclaim our sovereignty and our confidence and our power as women. They're tied together so much that the first profession ever, the reason why money was created is because of prostitution. It's because yeah. of pussy. Like before then, they would trade chickens for like goats. And it wasn't, it was actually like being a whore. It comes from the Hebrew word. It means, I think it means cave. It's not bad. It wasn't like a bad thing. This is like getting off topic, but it's just to the point of remembering that remembering of like, and I'm not saying that anybody should be a sex worker. I'm not, that's not what we're promoting. And if that's what you're doing, we're also very welcome and we'd love to have you. It's neither like, it's like not a thing, but I think that also could be like, people think, oh, fuck's well paid. Like, that's not what we're doing here. Like, <laughs> You're also welcome if that's like a desire of yours, come on in. We, it's not, it's all good. The point is like, they do go hand in hand it, yeah. and that's it. Like, it's just the that's bottom line. It's, it's intentional that we tie them together. I'm going to blow through the next couple of weeks, just in the interest of time, if you don't mind. So we covered desires, body, love, shameless. Week four, we're going to get into pleasure tools and really help you to access pleasure at the drop of a hat, be able to like drop into your body and feel good bottom line, right? Whenever you want to, with or without a partner. 
Um, and then we're going to take a little mid-session break and we're going to have a, a whole half day, our mid-session intensive, where we're really going to dive into how pleasure, the pleasure work that we've done and the foundation we've laid with desires and the body and dropping shame ties to our ability to go out to the world and earn green bucks. So pleasure energetics and money energetics come together for this half day intensive. And then we're going to use the remainder of the time really to help like uncock block your abundance. <laughs> so we're going to actually put those into practice, hold you accountable, do some hot seat coaching. We're going to gather each week in sisterhood and start using these tools and refining them. So you're not going to be like, let me teach you a bunch of stuff. Now, good luck. Go on your own. You're going to actually be like in the laboratory with us practicing these things, trying them, maybe like falling flat on your face at times and being like, this isn't working. Why am I stuck? And we're going to help you to unpack that. We're going to celebrate the fuck out of you. The celebration piece is a huge part of our containers. Um, so in, in a nutshell, that's how the 12 weeks goes. And we're going to, there's a link in the show notes. If you want to read this all in detail, read about Barbara's background in more depth, my background, like anything else you want to learn about the program, you can grab the link in the show notes. And you can also take advantage of the 30% off uh, coupon code that's on that page, which is valid through July 9th. So did I miss anything? No, I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before we wrap, is there anything that you would like to offer our listeners today as like one little nugget, one little takeaway, one little bit of well-fucked and well-paid wisdom that they could take with them at the end of this episode? Permission granted. Live oh. away. <laughs> okay. Fuck yes. I wholeheartedly approve and second that. <laughs> Permission granted. Barbara, thank you so much for being my partner in all of this. It's been so much fun to be well fucked and well paid with you as my sister and um, to create this amazing program for the women who are going to join us. If you're listening to this and you're interested, again, check the show notes for the link. You'll also find a link to book a call with either me or with Barbara if you want to chat with one of us, if you have questions that we didn't answer or you want to just see, is this a good fit? We're happy to hop on a call with you and do that. So you'll find a link to that in the show notes too. Thank you so much for being here, Barbara. Thank you, my listener, for being here, my listeners. I will be back next week with another episode. Until then, go get yourself well fucked and well paid. <laughs> Have a marvelous fucking week. I love you. Mwah. If you've ever met someone who's genuinely thriving, someone who is radiant, magnetic, and wildly alive and wondered, what's their secret? Well, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the Be Marvelous Podcast. <laughs>